Today, we are talking about fashioning a wooden medieval style tent pole. Stay tuned. Greetings, adventurers. We are now returned out into the wilderness. And of course, the very second that I came outside on this very cloudy day where it wasn't raining, all of a sudden it started raining. So I am I'm in my woolen garb. Very good. My hood is protecting my camera. So here we are. So my tent is a total of, I believe, six uh, foot and change. So I needed my tent pole to be very, very tall. Now, obviously, this isn't uh, a particularly easy thing to transport. I suppose it could be a quarter staff actually now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but that's neither here nor there at this point. So what I've done is I've cut it in half and then I've cut out these chinks so that they will fit together to a taller medieval style tent pole. So this is just a uh, long dowel that I bought then cut in half and then I carved out the mortises and then we're wrapping it up with some rope, very simple. So these two pieces are just a dowel that I bought from the store. And honestly, I'd recommend you trying to find a new, uh, like green piece of wood out in the forest or something. If it's legal for you to cut down trees or you have your own property, it would be much easier to work with uh, than trying to cut and then straighten out these little mortises with just a knife and a chisel like I did. Pine wood is notoriously difficult to work with that way. Um, but what I did was I laid out the pieces uh, each mortise is about a foot long, so when it comes together, there's there's a nice solid bit of, uh, of, of area there to grip with, so you're not going to have both pieces swaying like this in the breeze. So I marked everything out, and then every inch I sawed down to halfway through the dowel, and then I used a chisel to punch each one of those pieces out and then I had to go back over and try to get everything as flat as I could. And it's not perfect, but it is easy and it works even though it isn't perfect. Originally I was thinking I would drill two holes so I could stick little dowels through to help keep it together even better, um, but then after using the rope it's really not necessary to do that. It's really nice and sturdy. And there are a number of ways I suppose that you could wrap this rope around and through doing some research the most helpful things I saw were pictures. I didn't really see very much in the way of uh, videos for this, but with my method you actually don't need to tie any knots or anything. It comes loose very quickly and you don't have to worry about it getting so tight that you can't undo it. You just pull it once and then the entire thing unravels. And the entire thing sets up and takes down actually very quickly. Arguably just as fast as modern tent poles that you have to like put together and then loop through things. So obviously this amount of pivoting is a problem. We don't want that. We need it to be nice and sturdy. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take one piece of the rope up here above the top of the mortise. I'm going to loop it down the length of the uh, part that needs to be wrapped and then back up again towards uh, the top. So we're going to have this one long loop hanging down here. We're going to start wrapping the rope around the entire tent pole. And I found through experimentation that doing this with the pole standing upright is much easier than trying to lay it down on the ground and figure it out that way. Because the first couple loops here uh, are the problem where we have this sort of action going on. But once it gets a little bit more stable, we can pull out our excess here. And instead of wrapping the rope around, we can just start turning the uh, pole itself. And honestly, after having wrapped this a couple times and testing its strength, I've realized that a foot um, of that block cut out there so everything can fit together is kind of overkill and you could easily do it with, with less, meaning you would need less rope.
Okay, so what we're left with this, what we're left with is this tiny little loop down here at the bottom. So what we're gonna do, just loop that around one more time, why not? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the excess, make another loop, and put that through the loop that already exists. And then I'm gonna make another loop and loop that through the second loop. And then we pull, so the, the, this final third loop, one end is the excess. We pull the one that isn't and that will tighten the original loop. Then we can dress that up a little bit so it looks a little bit nicer. And that's not gonna come undone. And if you were really concerned that it would, you could stick a stick right through there and then pull it tight and that would just stay. But I can't bend that. This is nice and tight and we now have a tent pole with a really solid amount of rigidity that is not going to be bending on us in the wind or anything like that. And that's gonna stay right like that, right inside your tent. And then when you need to break it down, very quickly, you just give that a good pull and the entire thing unravels again. So there we go, all done. Very simple uh, medieval style tent pole, very easy to do, could be any size you wanted and it would just help add that little bit of medieval aesthetic to your tent even if all of your gear isn't uh, medieval in style, this piece can be quite easily. And there are little other upgrades that you could do. I'm gonna probably try to round off the edges so that it doesn't poke through my tent material um, or make some sort of leather caps to go on either end, again, for that same reason. And we'll go over those once it's in the tent and we can see it in action. And this is very much what I mean when I say I'm a living anachronism. I am doing something that looks period correct. I am using what I understand to be historically accurate techniques, and I am doing it with materials that are completely anachronistic and modern. So, my fellow adventurers, thank you for taking the time to watch this little video today. I do hope it helped you out and that it gave you some ideas. I will see you all next week, and in the meantime, good luck on your adventures.